Hi, I'm Dr. Monica Jetty, Consultant Physician, Pace Hospital, Hitech City. Today, we are here to discuss about vitamin D and its importance in health. Vitamin D is an essential nutrient which helps in the absorption of calcium and phosphorus which is essential for the maintenance of bones, muscles and also teeth. Vitamin D also plays an important role in immunity and also cardiovascular health. So, vitamin D is mainly produced in the body by sunlight which gets absorbed into the skin. The ultraviolet B rays in the sunlight gets absorbed into the skin and converts 7 dehydrocholesterol into pre-vitamin D3. This pre-vitamin D3 undergoes a temperature transformation into vitamin D3. This vitamin D3 or cholecalciferol enters into the bloodstream, goes into the liver, gets hydroxylated and forms 25 hydroxy vitamin D3. This 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 is the circulating form of vitamin D3 which then goes into the kidney and collects oxygen and hydrogen and forms 125 vitamin D3. This 125 vitamin D3 is also called calcitriol. So there are two types of vitamin D which is vitamin D2 which is ergocalciferol which comes mainly from plants and yeast and the other form of vitamin D is cholecalciferol which is vitamin D3 which comes from sunlight exposure and other dietary sources like fatty fish, omega-3 fatty acids and egg yolks etc. Vitamin D3 or cholecalciferol is easier for absorption than when compared to vitamin D2. The recommended daily requirement of vitamin D depends on the age of the individual. For example, if the individual is a baby which is less than which whose age is less than 12 months, the daily requirement is 400 international units. For ages between 1 to 70, the requirement is 600 international units and for ages above 70 years, the requirement is 800 international units. It is one of the most common question everybody asks if we uh, stand up in the sunlight for a longer time is it enough for the production of vitamin D. Yes it is enough but there are other factors which will also influence the production of vitamin D such as age. Older individuals have lesser capacity to develop vitamin D even though exposure is the same but the younger individuals might produce more uh, vitamin D when exposed to the same amount of sunlight as old people. Second thing, skin color of the skin. Darker people will have melanin which will reduce the absorption of UVB rays. So, that's why reducing the production of vitamin D. The other most important factor is time of the day. Everybody thinks that if you stand in the sunlight during early hours of the sun, vitamin D uh, production is more. But that is actually wrong. The midday sun is most important and effective uh, time where we can produce more vitamin D. Midday sun is from 11 o'clock in the morning to 3 o'clock in the afternoon where the sunlight is higher and the UVB rays are also in the higher concentration. So, a daily common exposure of uh, 10 to 30 minutes without any sunscreen for a limited time of 2-3 to three episodes per week is essential for the production of vitamin D if only sunlight is the source. Vitamin D is found in both animal and fortified uh, plant products. Vitamin, uh, the animal products contain more amount of vitamin D3. The examples are fatty fishes like salmon, uh, tuna etc, omega 3 fatty acid, egg yolks etc have higher concentrations of vitamin D. Where it comes to fortified plant products, the fortified foods like cheese, butter and also uh, almond milk, soy milk etc will have higher concentrations of vitamin D. When talking about fortified plant products, dairy fortified dairy products like uh, milk, butter and cheese have higher concentrations of vitamin D and other milk kinds of milks like almond and soy milk will also have higher concentrations of vitamin D. But the source of vitamin D, animal uh, source of vitamin D is comparatively superior to the plant based products.
Vitamin D deficiency symptoms vary depending on the level of deficiency. The most common symptoms of vitamin D deficiency are easy fatigability, multiple uh, uh, infections like reduced in the immunity, bone pains, muscle pains, etc. If the person is severely deficient, there are conditions like osteomalacia or osteoporosis where the bones become severely weak and are easily fractured and in cases of kids we observe a condition called rickets where the vitamin d is very low so that there are deformities in the formation of the bone itself and also they result in uh, developmental anomalies many people with vitamin d deficiency will not have symptoms as early as like if the deficiency immediately starts they don't develop symptoms immediately but to check about the vitamin D deficiency, we have to take a proper history about sun exposure, kind of uh, sunscreens they use and also other uh, outdoor and indoor activities, how much time do they spend outdoors, how much time do they spend indoors. So, if we want to know the exact level of vitamin D, we have to do a blood test which will uh, measure the accurate levels of vitamin D and then we can diagnose the deficiency of the disease. Vitamin D deficiency causes muscle fatigue because the vitamin D helps in the absorption of uh, calcium and phosphorus. So, the deficiency of vitamin D will cause reduced absorption of calcium and phosphorus leading to muscle fatigability, easy fatigability and tiredness. And also, vitamin D plays a one of the important role in brain regular function. So, the deficiency, there are studies which prove that vitamin D deficiency might cause depression in some people. Vitamin D plays a major role in modulating both innate and adaptive immunities. Innate immunity is the first line of defense and adaptive immunity is a long term defense. In case of innate immunity, vitamin D helps in the production of uh, antimicrobial cytokines which will kill the microbes thus by reducing the incidence of infections. Whereas in case of adaptive immunity, it helps in the modulation of T cells thus by reducing the infection incidences. Vitamin D is required in higher amounts in gestational and lactating women as it helps in the improvement of bone health, immunity and also the muscle development of the baby and also the mother. So, the daily requirement of the gestational and lactating women should be somewhere around 600 international units. Vitamin D plays a major role in skin health as it promotes or strengthens the skin barrier thus by reducing the dryness of the skin. It increases the collagen production and it also has anti-inflammatory effect which will help in the maintenance of skin health. Psoriasis is an autoimmune condition which is characterized by rapid keratinocyte production and chronic inflammation. Vitamin D has an anti-inflammatory effect and it also regulates the keratinocyte production thus by reducing the dryness and also scaling of the body. Production of vitamin D through sunlight depends on multiple factors as we already discussed. For individuals who are lighter skin, a daily exposure or weekly 2 or 3 times exposure of 10 to 30 minute intervals without any sunscreen is recommended. But in cases of darker individuals where the melanin is high, this melanin will block the UVB rays. So, the exposure of 30 to 60 minutes in 2 to 3 intervals in a week is recommended for the pro sufficient production of vitamin D. Supplementation of vitamin D without doctor recommendation can sometimes be hazardous. As vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin, it is not like vitamin B12 where it gets excreted if the levels are extra. So, vitamin D when taken in excess amounts may become toxic where we consider toxicity more than the levels of 100 nanogram per milliliter. What are the signs and symptoms of vitamin D toxicity are? People may come with vomitings, nausea, excessive uh, sweating and also kidney damages. We Sometimes we see liver damage also in patients who consume more vitamin D than recommended. So, if you want to start a vitamin D supplementation, we please do check the levels of vitamin D and then take appropriate supplementation for the required amount of time.
in case of kidney and liver diseases it is safe to give vitamin d but the dosage and form of vitamin d should be different in case of kidney disease active form like calcitriol is recommended with measure daily uh, or intervals of measuring of serum calcium and phosphorus levels are required where in case of liver disease uh, active vitamin d or d3 or d2 can be given but the dosage is more when compared to the normal population these are the most common doubts which we have in mind when it comes to vitamin d if you have any further queries please contact pace hospitals high tech city